Всем привет! Hello to everyone! Это мое первое видео на канале русский через тексты, Russian through text. И сегодня мы начнем читать рассказы Льва Толстого, Валио Толстой. Все лучшие сказки и рассказы. Так называется эта книга. Все лучшие сказки и рассказы, рассказы про детей. Stories about children. So the very first story we will start reading is called Спорщики. Спорщики is derived from the verb спорить. And спорить means to debate, to quarrel with somebody. For example, if you see two, pe two people debating, you could call them in Russian спорщики. And so let's read this story. It's a very short story. All these sentences you see here is the whole story. Так, два человека на улице нашли вместе книгу и стали спорить, кому ее взять. Третий шел мимо и спросил, кто из вас умеет читать? Никто. Так зачем вам книга? Вы спорите все равно, как два плешивых дрались за гребень, а самим чесать нечего было. And so let's analyze it and translate word by word. Два человека на улице, two people, two people on the street, found together a book and started quarreling, started debating who to take it. So because the book is feminine, книга, so because of the ending a, it's feminine. That's why when we are referring to it, we say ее. Кому взять ее? Who to take it? Третий шел мимо и спросил. The third. One second. The third, uh, guessing human, the, the third man, went by, or crossing by, and asked, Who of you can read? Nobody. Так зачем вам книга? So, what for... This book is to you. What for this book is to you? So what is the purpose that you want this book? Вы спорите, you quarrel in the same way as, in the same way as, second, in the same way as. So this все равно, in this very context, means in the same way as, 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 Two bold people, so bold is without hair, Lysia, Lysia или Plishivia, were quarreling for a comb, Gribin, it's like this, this kind of thing, which with which you comb your hair. And if we have this, this is called Gribin, and this kind of thing is called Rashoska, or for example, this kind of thing. So this one are расческа, and this is гребень. It's important to remember. А самим чесать нечего было. And them, they themselves have nothing to comb. So have nothing to comb. А самим чесать нечего было. So they had nothing to comb. To comb. So, the next short story is A Lazy Daughter. A Lazy Daughter. Ленивая дочь. Ленивая дочь. So, I guess this is the daughter. She's довольно-таки милая. Милая девочка. She looks pretty. She's beautiful. Мать с дочерью достали бадью воды и хотели неть в избу. Дочь сказала, тяжело нести, дай я воды солью немного. Мать сказала, сама дома пить будешь, а если сольешь, надо будет идти в другой раз. Дочь сказала, я дома не буду пить, а тут на весь день напьюсь. And so let's read it word by word again. Mother with daughter, so mother with her daughter, 
took but you body is not exactly what you see on it's like a tub you see it's a tub it's a tub of water широкое низкое деревянное ведро ведро Actually, this ведро is a bucket it's a bucket a bucket of pail it's a full bucket of water bucket so but the thing is that bucket is usually a metal a metal thing like this so this is called badia but well for now nobody doesn't really really matter if it's wooden or metal just doesn't matter in this case it's called badia but translated like a bucket so a bucket of water and wanted to bring it into the house Isba Isba is like this type of house like a wooden house it's a very old wooden house like all of wood no, no some wood are not like this it's like all the woods are like this the type of Russian houses yep and um, the thing is that in here it's a very old uh, variant of writing the word нести, они хотели нести, it's like они хотели нести. In today, Russian language, in the modern Russian language, it'd be correct to write нести. И хотели нести в избу. Дочь сказала, the daughter said, uh, it's heavy to bring it, тяжело нести, ее, то есть ведро, бадью, Give, give, I, water, will take out a bit. So uh, the meaning of this sentence is that um, give me the water, I will uh, like take it out of the bucket a little bit. Uh, die, for example, die, we can use in the meaning like give me since since give me literally is translated to russian as дай мне but we can um like put down мне and say only дай so дай мне дай мне but you so give me the bucket give me the bucket is it's uh the meaning is that give me the bucket and i will take out the water from the bucket and like throw it on the earth. Take it on the earth. A little bit. Mother said, You yourself will drink it drink it at home. So will drink it at home. And so but this meaning is but or and you can translate any uh, any way you want. But here is but uh, but if you will throw it out, it it will be needed to it will be needed to go the next time. So you need, will need to go the next time for water to this well. To this this is a well. And this this whole thing, this wooden thing behind the mother and the daughter, is called kalodits. Kalodits. So where it's like uh, there is a chain on which the bucket, on the end of which the bucket is hanging, and on the depth of this kalodis is some water. So you're like putting it down, the bucket is full of water, you pull it up, and you have water in your house, and you bring it to the house. Надо будет идти в другой раз. Next time, the other time. Um, one more time, one more time, one more time. Uh, daughter said, дочь сказала, я дома не буду пить, а тут на весь день напьюсь. I will not drink at home. So remember that uh, Russian doesn't have the same word order as in English. So you can say, for example, I... In home, will 
not drink. It's not correct in English. It's not correct in English, but it is correct in Russian. So you can say, я дома не. So this is not не. Не буду пить. I in home will not drink. According to the English grammar, we could also write in Russian. So, like, firstly, I will not drink at home. Я не. So, this не is before the verb. Я не буду. Буду. Пить. Дома. Doma is at home. So the word order in Russian is really different and you can put like uh, the words in the same order as you do in English, for example, or in any order you want. For example, дома я не буду пить воду. Или я не буду пить дома. Или я дома не буду пить. So at any order you want, you still be understood. А тут and here... Uh, I will not be thirsty, so напьюсь. Let's define it. It's like to to have a drink. To have a drink. It's not to get drunk. Uh, so uh, you, it's, it says to be drunk. It, that's the other meaning of this verb. For example, напиться, напиться, напиться has two meanings. The first is to drink. Any liquid, any liquid, for example, usually it's water, usually water, usually water. And the second is to become drunk, to become drunk, to become drunk. And that's why in this meaning, in this very meaning, it's about water only, of course, because like, look at her face, she's very young, she's not allowed to drink alcohol, of course. And um, so, and and here, I will I will drink enough for the whole day for for the whole day. А тут на весь день напьюсь. If we could use the same order as in English, we could use uh, а тут напьюсь на весь since again you can use any word order as you wish it's not really very uh, important старый дед и внучок an old an old so again we don't have articles in, in Russian that's just very simple in order to make it correct in English an old man and and a grandson grand grandson внучок внучок this is a prefix it's not a prefix like a, a suffix meaning uh, like a tender tender approach to the grandson the grandson itself could be will be внук внук as masculine as a as a boy and granddaughter granddaughter is vnuchka vnuchka it's feminine of course because ka it's a suffix for females so not man and a, and a grandson so anyway uh the word dead itself means an old man so just i don't, <laughs> don't really see the meaning and using study because dead dead is always an old man. So see, he has a white beard. He's already very old. And so let's read the story. We have... Yeah, it's only one page. It's only one page. Very little. And a picture of a boy here. И маленький мальчик с молотком. Это молоток. И гвозди. Здесь гвозди. So, firstly, I read all the sentences in here, and then we'll be translating it. Стал дед очень стар. 
Ноги у него не ходили, глаза не видели, уши не слышали, зубов не было. И когда он ел, у него текло назад изо рта. Сын и невестка перестали его за стол сажать и давали ему обедать за печкой. Снесли ему раз обедать в чашке. Он хотел ее подвинуть, да уронил и разбил. Невестка стала бронить старика за то, что он им все в доме портит и чашки бьет, и сказала, что теперь она ему будет давать обедать в лоханке. Старик только вздохнул и ничего не сказал. Сидят раз муж с женой дома и смотрят. Сынишка их на полу дощечками играет. Что-то слаживает. Отец и спросил, «Что это ты делаешь, Миша?» А Миша и говорит, «Это я, батюшка, лоханку делаю. Когда вы с матушкой стары будете, чтобы вас из этой лоханки кормить». Муж с женой поглядели друг на друга и заплакали. Им стало стыдно за то, что они так обижали старика и стали с тех пор сажать его со стол и ухаживать за ним. It's a very tender and very interesting story. So let's read it word by word. So, стал дед, so became the old man. So uh, in English it's uh, the old man became very old. The legs of his, uh, so uh, in Russian, if you're translating word by word, it could be legs. Um, у него, it's like belonging to him. So uh, the legs of his, his legs, did not go. They were not, not able to go. He wasn't able to go um, in normal ways. He could be as he, when he was um, not as old as now. The eyes did not see, the ears did not hear. Again, the negative thing is before the verb. For example, не видел. Например, он не видел. He did not see. Она не видела. She did not see. So, so in English we put not after the verb and in Russian before. Уши не слышали, зубов не было. So, uh, there were no teeth. Зубов не было, это, uh, there were no teeth. And when he ate, he was eating, and uh, when he was eating, uh, у него текло назад изо рта. Uh, текло, текло, it like was flowing to flow. It, it means that when he was eating, of what he ate, it was going out of his mouth. He could not chew everything in order to, to swallow it. And so, у него, um, of his, flew out of uh, the mouth. So, it's like, uh, у него, it's like, uh, we, we're, we are referring to whom Uh, of, of who we are talking about. For example, у нее текло изо рта. У нее... Uh, <laughs> не, давайте лучше не текло изо рта. У нее есть uh, сапоги. Сапоги. She has boots. She has boots. Like, у нее is like um, in, in or um, like she, she has like something belongs to her. Like she has in her belongings that that is the boots. Или у него есть кот. Или у меня у меня есть собака. Собака. У меня есть собака. So we, when we are talking that we have something or somebody has something, we say у него, у меня, у нее. And in the same thing, у него текло назад изо рта. That, that it, it is talking about his, him, about him, that uh, it was flowing out of, of his mouth. Uh, сын, uh, so his uh, son, and the невестка, in Russian language, is the woman who your son is going to marry. For example, you have a son, and he's going to marry. And the woman he is intending to marry is your Невестка. Невестка. So it's important. But, but it's the other important thing is that невестка 
это невеста сына. So, невестка it's the bride, the, um, the bride of your son. The bride of your son. The bride of your son. Or one's one's son. And невеста is one's bride. So невестка, with this suffix, is the bride of, of one's son. And невеста without ка, without ка, is one's bride. It's very important to remember. И невестка пригласили, so uh, his son, the son and the, the bride of his son, stopped uh, stopped сажать uh, so let's let me remember how it's in English сажать is to to seat to offer a seat so uh, they stopped uh, offering a seat to him uh, over over the table so they did not seat him on the table and exactly like like this or the order. So they stopped sitting him over the table and uh, gave him to eat over the oven, over the stove. This is this is pechka. This is the pechka. So and exactly this pechka is looking like uh, like this. Well, let, let me wait. It's like this. So here, here is the place where, for example, you you put some, uh, like in the in the real stuff or in the oven where you cook bread or something, which needs heat to be in order to be cooked, and um, like because you cook something in the heat in here, that's why the whole this thing is always hot, and in here people might sleep for example here is a pillow here is the hat and here is here's the man sleeping from here goes the hot air it's like um it's like like this and so he was eating right over over this stuff like like here he was eating in here Very old. I was thinking here. I'm sorry for strange illustrations. Just say that that's the way I can draw in here. And so, um, снесли, так давали им обедать за печкой over the the this печка the stove. Снесли ему раз обедать в чашке. So, uh, it was given to him once. To eat in a cup. So there was in the cup that where was his food. He wanted to move it. To move it. So in Russian, for example, when we talk uh, to move something, подвинуть ее, for example, чашку, we can say to move, to move. It, move it, but we can also uh, use the other order as ее подвинуть, to move it. It'll be the almost, uh, usually the same meaning, always the same meaning. Например, он хотел подвинуть ее, и он хотел ее подвинуть. The meaning is the same, just the word order is different and it does not affect the meaning at all. So, он хотел ее подвинуть. Да, уронил. It's but. He threw it on the floor accidentally. Accidentally. Уронить. Уронить. Does mean to throw in the floor accidentally. So for example, you threw in the floor a cup or a tablespoon or something. Uh, and you did not do it, you did not do it um, deliberately, you did it accidentally. 
but to drop, to drop, the meaning is to drop, to, to drop, to let fall, to, yeah, it's like to fall. Usually the meaning of to drop, and, and, it, uh, threw into pieces, so it was broken into pieces. It's not written in here, but anyway, Razbit is to, uh, it's like when it falls and it's broken into pieces, or when you th you hit something and it's, it's broken into pieces. For example, like, um, the cup was in the hands of an old man, and then he accidentally dropped it, like, like that, and Anaras Bilis. Another is Bilis, so into pieces. Is on you держал? Старик держал? Дед держал? Дед уронил? So it threw on the floor, down on the floor. И дед разбил. But it's really more correct to say that чашка разбилась. So it means that he, it, it was broken, that she, it, it broke, just it broke, the, the cup broke. So если мы скажем чашка разбила, разбила, we need to put something in here, meaning that the cup broke something. But it, it is not correct, just it, it's absurd that the cup broke something. Чашка разбилась. And the cup broke, it bro broke by herself. Uh, so the bride of the sun, Nivestka, started to blame uh, to blame uh, the old man for that, for that, uh, за то, что, for that, he, uh, he spoils, spoils everything in the house and breaks the cups and said that now she one second will give so this will give him uh, to eat in Lahanka. I'm very much interested what is Lahanka because I've never heard about that как деревянная круглая или продолговатая посуда для сирки белья мытья. Um, I'm very much interested what does lahanka mean, because I honestly don't know. Uh, so, anyway. Anyway, well, let's let's convince that this is some place in in the house, some place in the house made of wood, for example, some made with wood, some place made of wood, of wood, and um, the old man only exhaled, so so no no it's inhaled, so inhaled, so um, second I gotta be here, of uh, uh, it doesn't really matter to inhale or exhale, it's just to make a breath, to make a breath, to make a breath, a breath, but to вдохнуть does mean to inhale, inhale, and выдохнуть, выдохнуть, is exhale, exhale, like to, to breathe out and to breathe in. Inhale, exhale, вдохнуть, выдохнуть. For example, when you are at it, in a doctor, when you are in the doctor's cabinet, for example, this is a doctor, like looking at you, and this, like he is examining your health, is this thing. And he says to you, 
he or she says to you. Вдохните. И не дышите. So, uh, inhale and hold your breath. Hold your breath. Just, just inhale and hold your breath. And also, she or he can say, выдохните и не дышите. So, exhale and do not breath. And hold your breath. It's a common in when you go to the doctor, for example, the, for the therapist, for example. And, and, uh, said nothing. Or, he, um, like, like we didn't, we can't say uh, negative, uh, negative negation in English, but it does occur in, in, in Russian. For example, um, что ты ему сказал? Что ты ему сказал? Я ничего ему не сказал. How can we translate that? What did you say to him? It's like here. What did you say? Did you say to him? So what did you say to him? And я ничего ему не сказал, but translated as I did not say. So no, 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 no. I'm sorry, sorry. It's I said him nothing. So we do not use double negation, but in Russian it's a very common practice. For example, um, мы ничего не сделали. Мы ничего не Сделали. Ничего не сделали. It means we, we've done nothing. So we can say мы... Uh, so uh, мы сделали ничего. Мы не можем так сказать. Мы не можем сказать мы сделали ничего. It's a literate. And it's like a literal trans translation of this. But this is correct. This is correct in English. And this is incorrect in Russian. We, we can't say мы сделали ничего. Мы сделали ничего. It's incorrect. We say мы ничего не сделали. Ничего не сделали. Или мы ничего не пили. For example, we did not drink nothing. We, we, we did... Uh, we drank nothing. We drank nothing. Мы ничего не ели. We ate nothing. We ate nothing. We are we are uh, мы голодные. We are oh my god, I forgot the word голодные in English. How could I? Um, we want to eat anyway. I'm hungry. We are hungry. We are hungry. Uh, we want to. Uh, we did. We did. Uh, we eat, we ate nothing. We ate nothing. Uh, он ничего не сделал. Он ничего не сделал. He did nothing. He did nothing. But here we use ничего. So nothing, не сделал. Did not do. Ничего, nothing, didn't eat. Ничего, не пиши. It's correct in Russian. So let's continue. So и ничего не сказал. So he did, he say, said nothing. Um, one second, I'll erase something from here because it's like looking messy. Quite messy. I don't like what it's called, looking messy. Um, and so, uh, сидят раз муж с женой дома и смотрят. So, uh, once, once, husband and the wife were, were sitting, so they were sitting in the house, so they were sitting at home, at home, and they see, and they saw how their son, their son, so it's his grandson, the его внук, uh so as their son сынишка it's an old it's an old uh, word order it's in, in modern russian it's correct to say их сынишка их сынишка it's also a diminutive form the full the normal form is сын сынишка is a diminutive form сынишка или сынок сынок it's also diminutive их на полу дочечками играет. So, uh, again, their son is playing 
with with the shish it's like it's like wooden pieces long pieces of wood it's like uh like anyway long pieces of wood like this these these ones as you can see it's the doski doski doska Uh, the shichka, the shichka is a small piece. It's a small piece. Let this be a small piece. So if we, if um, uh, they were talking that he is watching, he's playing with doski with like big, big pieces of wood. They they could be maybe this size, like this size or this size. Like they're very big. And the shishki are very small pieces. So let's raise this. Ah! Oh, you're so slow. Slow. Very slow. Anyway, so uh, he's playing with wood on the floor. On the floor. Uh, he is making something. Slazud. For example, uh, this I guess, I guess, it's a common verb. Skladovat. For example, uh, for example, we have toys on the floor like this one, and they are all around the room. And you say to your child, "Slaji." So this is the imperative form. Uh, the so second person, second person singular. It's imperative second person singular. Slaji. Igrushki. So um. And the child makes them like this, for example, in the box. And they are all then in the box. Складывают их в коробку. And uh, in this case, in this case, when he, uh, when this boy, this uh, grandson of the of the old man, was слаживать uh, или складывать дощечки, he was like, this is one дощечка, this is the second. And he was making something like this with, for example, like, um, like this, with this one, <laughs> like, pew, 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 pew. sorry, I guess you understand. So, он складывал дощечки вместе. And so, um, the father asked. The other asked then. For, for in this case, E is like then. The other asked then when he looked at at his son. Uh, what is that? What you are doing, Misha? And Misha answered. Это я батюшка лоханку делаю. It's a very interesting construction. I'm not sure I can translate it in, into into English, but the meaning is that. Um, I am making uh, lahanka. I'm making lahanka. It's like um, again. I I made this. I made this word again. Um, there is nothing in the internet. There is nothing in Google. <laughs> That's. It's very strange anyway. It's very strange. Well, again, let's guess that there is something wooden where where one can see. Maybe maybe there is maybe there is this thing. I don't know. I honestly don't know. I, I made this one for the first time in my eighteen years really. So um это я батюшка лоханку делаю. Uh I am doing I am doing I am doing a lahanka, father. So, um, if we could translate this, это я батюшка лаханку делаю. Делаю. Это я батюшка лаханку делаю. It's like um, это я батюшка лаханку делаю. It's like a very um, spoken language it's not used in uh, in, in academic russian but you can say like 
oh, oh, Dad, I'm doing, I'm doing the hunger, I'm doing this thing. Uh, it's me, I'm doing this thing. Um, it's like, I'm not sure it's, it, we can translate that in, in the same meaning as it, it could have in English. Anyways, like, um, Father, Father, I am making a lahanka. I am making a lahanka. So, Batushka, Batushka, uh, by the way, Batushka. Batushka. Sh. Ka. Batushka. Has two meanings. Uh, no, no, also has three meanings. Three meanings. Three meanings. The first is uh, father, but with a tender meaning. Like father. But. But it's old. Where it's not used in this meaning in modern Russian. It's not used in modern Russian. In modern Russian, as referring to father, as like your father, your uh, father as the husband of your mother or anything. It's not not used in modern Russian. The second meaning is a priest. A priest of the Orthodox Church is usually called, called a batushka. Uh, but it's usually called by like um, old women, like... Um, Батюшка, благословите. Батюшка. Благословите. So it's like uh, Father, bless me. Father, Father, bless me. So fa uh, Батюшка, it's like uh, Father somebody. It's it's. Uh, but usually when we are referring to priests, they are called, like, for example, uh, Отец Андрей. It's like when we say Atiets Andre, it's a priest. It's always a priest in this very thing. For example, when we say uh, Andre Atiets, we mean that Andrew beca became a father, that now he has a son or a daughter. daughter. But when we say Atiets Andre, it's always a priest. Always. And when we, we, we don't really want to write the whole word отец, for example, in, in written language, we you can shorten it by O. O Andrei. We, didn't, we, did, we use this one only in written, written language. For, for example, when we are making SMS or we are writing in Facebook or in VK, anything, it's not really pronounced. When we say, uh, we say it out loud, we say отец, Andrei in full. But so, again, in here... The meaning is Bachka as Atiets, as father, as papa, papa. <laughs> uh, so when you, so you, he's addressing his, his father, his father, dad, uh, when you with mother, with his mother, and by the way, the word Matushka has also two meanings. And yes, again, I, I um, forgot to tell you about the third meaning. Third meaning is all usually, um, it was sometimes used. Referring to Tsar. For example, the last uh, Tsar, uh, Nikolai II, Nicholas II, Nikolai II, and other previous previous emperors, they sometimes or like very common uh, again in the past, they were called Tsar Batushka. It's it's like Tsar is. Uh, the father of uh, of of this of the country, the father of of the Russian state, is used in, in these three meanings. And matushka matushka is used in the same two meanings as in here. It's like first is the old mama, and the second is the wife wife of the priest. Of the Orthodox priest. For example, we have a priest. Usually they look like they like this in, in Russia. So we have a priest. I'm sorry for drawing the cross in this way. And so, and uh, this is his wife, for example, now it's, it's, I 
for example. So uh, some people might call the priest Batushka and his wife Matushka. But uh, well, it's it's not really common. It's not really common. It's usually called like in um, within the old women. So usually old women like uh, babushkas, the same, uh, who go to church, they can call uh, the priest and his wife as mat Batushka and Matushka. But again, referring to the text, uh, Batushka and Matushka, it's like Papa and Mama. So when you and uh, with with mother will be old so that it's like so that uh, you both to feed from this lahanka so it's like uh, i am building this lahanka i am building this lahanka in order that i could i could feed you from from there in the future when you will be, will be old so Husband with wife looked at at each other. So at each other. This is the common phrase друг на друга. Друг на друга. So друг на друга so looked at each other and started to cry. И заплакали. Is they started to cry. Uh, they felt guilty in stala sit and so it, it became guilty it's it to translate literally word by word it became guilty um for that uh they they um like abijali is like to humiliate but anyway was let's look the exact translation abijat is like to um abidit Anyway, it's like uh, humiliated the the old man, and from that time, from that times, they started seating him over the table and taking care of him. Ukhajovodzanim taking care of him. So I guess that that was very informative to you, and we don't have really very much notes in here. But they're very colorful, colorful and interesting. I hope that this video was uh, interesting for you. The next time we will be analyzing next three, three stories from this book. And uh, please, I ask you to, to like this video and share and maybe subscribe to the channel if you like this video. Also recommend it to your friends if you have somebody learning Russian. Uh, if you need to... If you did not understand something from the video or you have some questions, so write in the in the comments and I will ask, answer you and help you with everything you ask me. So thank you very much and goodbye.